Andre, and then he lost against Cryoc, both on this map. I don't know why he keeps coming out on HBR, but, uh, but I guess we'll see. Miyuka's also pointing out that Marwin also dropped from TLS, but I know that uh, but Marwin dropped because he couldn't play round of 16, but he could play round of 24. So I, I think he will be able to play today. Anyway, that's my good old pre-game analysis. So let's go. Let's do it. All right, is it going to be Michael? Please don't be Michael. And there's a Zerg. There's a Zerg. Oh, it's... Wait. Oh, it's Eon's... Oh! Ah! Ah! It's Eon Zerg? Versus draw. <laughs> oh, that's Eon Zerg new! He knew as well. Oh, man, look at this. Of course he knew. He's the coach. The coach knew. Um... And apparently, Draw was prepared to play against Andre. So, so I don't know. He is, uh, he is not prepared either. Anyway, this is cool. This is cool. So we got, we got uh, PBZ action on HBR. If this goes to a long game, that's gonna favor the Protoss. This is a good map for Protoss late game PBZ. If you split the map, pretty sweet. Um, although it does allow the Zerg to do lots of awesome drops into the main. Is the music really quiet, by the way? I can like barely hear this. Let's, let's get up a little bit. All right. Anyway, whoa, my overlay is one of the things backward. What's going on here? Sorry, guys. I had this. I was the wrong way around. All right, there we go. I fixed it. I got it. I got it. Just calm down. God, you guys are all so whiny. Bunch of girls. Hey, right, we got an overpool into expansion. Pro guys is gonna poke in here, see what's going on. Doesn't want to get faked out by a fake drone. And uh, let's see how we'll draw walls on this map. It's pretty tricky to get a good wall off. Uh, you might try like forge gateway. I think he's actually set this up to do forge gateway. One cannon tucked in right nice in there. Yep, forge good, excellent. Touching the gas, so this is tight. Get a gateway right here, touching the forge. That'll be tight. You got a perfect spot for one cannon. Love this wall in. Pretty tricky to get that pylon positioning correctly, but looks like Draw has done it correctly. So even though he didn't prepare PVZ on this map, or he claims he didn't prepare PVZ on this map, seems to know the building placement anyway. So that is pretty good. I'm also going to try and uh, <laughs> focus a little bit more now that we're in the real match. Gotta shake off my uh, random show match. Relax casting. Oh, build a gas, build a gas. Kill, kill him. Oh, no, he got faked. Ah, oh, snapping that drone's neck. Fuck you, drone. Wait, whoops. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, how about you, sir? You scoundrel. Or something. Anyway, so that's not ideal. People calling GG already. Lol. Um. Anyway, so... Interesting uh, cannon placement as well. Ooh, I like this. So, this is, so, so you see, the gateway placed here is going to allow uh, potential rumbies along the top. So he's built the cannons at the top as well, and also, even though it wasn't overpool expand, he's built the two cannons first, knowing that he's denied the hatchery and hence forced additional zerglings, although there are actually only four links here, which is a little bit surprising to me. Often if uh, the zerg can't put the hatchery down, they will make the first six links. But Eon Zerg opted for only four, which is, so that's that's a little bit curious, but, and you see, so, so since Draw made the two cannons instead of just one, he, uh, Kind of maybe threw away a little bit of that advantage here, but you know, given that this is a pretty wide choke on HBR, I think getting a two cannons is probably uh, probably fine. Anyway, as you can see, perfectly positioned, not to block the nexus, all nice and touching. Um, we do like Protoss buildings snuggling each other. So we're uh, very friendly. See, we're not we're not like Terran players who just kill their own buildings. No, we like our buildings. It looks like Draw is going to continue the action with this probe. And uh, we did see, of course, Eonzo got his third base here. That's all fine and dandy. So otherwise, it looks like uh, everything is continuing as normal. This is quite, this is gonna be quite interesting because um, Eonzo uh, lost the ZBP last week, or was it the week before? Actually, I have to quickly recheck this. Um, yeah, he lost, oh my god, he actually lost against Draw last week, wow. Yeah, in the first match, he came back against Draw on Polaris Rhapsody and he lost. Uh, in what was a pretty cut and dry game, actually, because, um... Essentially, Draw just, like, went out with a bunch of speed loss and killed his third, and then that was basically it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the game went on a little bit long after that, but, you know, Zerg was basically dead from that point. Um, 
And, and, and also, Eons are in fact lost in week one as well against Busy. So even though Eons are just one of the strongest players on IFU, and of course they're their team captain, uh, he's 0-2 in the finals so far. So definitely probably doesn't want to go 0-3 here. That'd be a little bit sad. Draw on the other hand, did he play in week one? Yeah, Draw has actually won both of his games. So uh, so he's definitely pulling his way here in the finals. He uh, beat Eonzerg last week, and then he beat Cryok in week number one. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Anything else super interesting? Not really. We've got a Stargate here. This guy's probably going to make a Citadel. Or not. And scouting pro guy still just wandering around. Looks like, ooh, we got a sneaky zealot. A sneaky zealot. Moving around the top. Gonna try and get a drone killer too. And there's a citadel. And will he get one? Alright, Yonzerk sees it. He's probably not gonna get it then. Yeah, no chance. He can't just like run into this little hole then. And try and uh, kill as many Zergans as he can. Oh, he might get a drone? Nah. Oh, he didn't quite get to the good gap. So he's not even gonna kill Zergwing. Oh, it's a bit unfortunate for that cell. Meanwhile, we do have the gas. Sorry. Well, yeah, we have the gas. We have the plus one, rather. It's a little bit more interesting. We even have a pylon here to block a Zergling counterattack. That's uh, that's interesting. Draw's playing very safe this game. Going for the two cannons before expansion, getting this uh, special blocking pylon here. You know, I mean, that's a pretty common thing where if you move out with a harassing zealot and the Zerg makes a bunch of Zerglings to defend it, uh, you know, once they've cleared out the zealot, they will often go for a big Zergling counterattack. Um, because, you know, they, they made all the extra Zerglings anyway, so might as well make use of them. But, uh, looks like in this case, it's gonna be nice and walled off, although he's gonna have to kill this later on to get out. Uh, even making a third cannon there, but then realizing he doesn't need to, now that his Corsair's come in here and gotten a candor at what's going on in the Zerg base. So, it looks like we have second gas, overlord, sorry. Uh, of course, they're being annoying. Gonna get one overload kill. Actually, he's got two kills already. I assume uh, that it, yeah, it looks like it just killed the overlord that was around the base. So killed the overlord that was in the main. Oh, killed another overlord and then got scourged out. So two overlord kills for the one corsair. Not terrible. Not a bad exchange. In the meantime, what is the Eons are gonna do? Looks like ooh, he's going straight for some lurkers. All right, I like it. He has got his five hatches up. But, so this seems like he's going to play a little bit defensively and perhaps go for a, uh, a contain here against Draw. I do remember Draw actually playing a, a PvZ on this map, I think in one of just some practice games that Busy streamed. Uh, or maybe it was DeWall streaming them or something. I can't remember who's... Or, or maybe it was just on Draw's own stream. I, I honestly cannot remember where I saw this. But recently, Draw was playing some practice games and he did play a, a, a PvZ on this map, potentially to practice for today, in fact. And he just got hardcore Lurker contained and just kind of rolled over and died. Uh, in fact, in his TLS match, that's actually how he lost to Julia in game number one. Julia went for, uh, opened with fast lurkers and contained him, and Draw, for some reason, instead of, like, trying to, you know, go Mass Reaver or, you know, do, do some other more normal responses to getting contained, he often likes to do, like, lots of fancy drops, you know, getting multiple shuttles and that kind of thing. I mean, it's kind of his style anyway, even when he's not contained. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly how efficient that is. Anyway, Yonzerg is getting his mineral only now. There's a few units running out here. Two DTs actually. Draw might be trying to use these units to tank shots and allow the DTs to run by into the main. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Sick timing here. What Lurker is done? It's gonna borrow a bit of a random location here. The drone's trying to block. Are they gonna be able to? The one DT is making its way into the main. That's gonna be crucial if he can get in there, but no, he's just gonna run into the back here because can't quite get in. And as you can see, with no Overlord here in the main, and Overlord speed only just starting, it would have been really devastating if that uh, DT had actually made it. Um, so a very cute little move there by Draw. Doesn't quite pay off though. I mean, he got a couple of drone kills, forced to pull, but otherwise uh, not too effective. And now the Lurkers are out, and he doesn't really have a ground army to kind of uh, keep them away from his base. So the Elder can start setting up a Lurker container. He's only got two Lurkers now, but with detection really far off. Um, this could be quite effective. You can see the Robo is uh, just over halfway done now. Looks like Eons are going to try and clean up uh, that DT that's hiding in the back of his base. Does not want it to randomly run into his main at a later point in the game while he's not paying attention. And uh, it looks like he has a couple of lurks are down. Draw is going to run these three Zealots out so he at least has something on the map. But this is pretty annoying for him. And uh, all the while, Eons has now got a, uh, a fourth base up. Uh, Baku asks, what's the Corsair count? Looks like it is just two. 
for the moment. So, uh, so you guys are not at risk of that, of course, uh, by going for Lurkers. He is sacrificing a little bit of uh, the anti-air capacity. He almost like draws actually snuck out a whole bunch more speed lots, given that you know there's only two lurkers there. He also does have a few hydras out, but it doesn't look like he's got any lurkers at home. So these speed lots could potentially do a good amount of damage. They are plus one speed lots now, uh, although the hydras also have plus one as well. So he also are keeping pace with the upgrades. I don't know why the hell he's going to the top left though. That's a little bit weird. He must sneak in out a few more uh, zealots as well. The gateway of the front has fallen, uh, although that's just going to give uh, draw a little bit of space to move out as well. Draw, meanwhile, just now getting goon range, so uh, not gonna have that for a little while. And meanwhile, doesn't actually attack with these zealots, um, so perhaps just wants to save them, wants to have a mobile army out on the map. I do remember one thing that, you know, uh, the, the other players he was practicing with told him was that uh, when you get this kind of zealot force out on the map, you shouldn't suicide it trying to do little bits of damage. It's much better if you can to save as many as, like, to do light harassment, but otherwise try and save as many zealots as you can. And then when you need to break the contain, you can come in from the with the zealots from the back and then from the front as well. And that's very, very effective in breaking the contain. And I thought that was a very, a very intelligent thing. But it looks like Draw also is going to abuse the fact that there's no Overlord here to maybe just clear the two Lurkers with a DT uh, by itself, which is uh, a pretty smart move here. And it looks like he is, in fact, going to clear it. Uh, very f fast reaction time for the Elder to pull that last one back. But look at this. A lot more Lurkers coming in now. And oh man, going to grab a few free units out on the map. And there's a big bar. Where's the Storm though? They're all pumped up. A lot of energy on these High Templars. Could easily get a huge Storm off. One of the High Templars coming out of here. Eonzerg's he got to spread the Lurkers. The mo Monster Storm on four Lurkers. Eonzerg's he not spreading. One more Storm will kill. All four of those Lurkers, but Draw's not going for it. I don't know why he didn't get a second Storm off there. It looks like it's because he somehow ran the Zealots into the main base. No, he's actually elevated them. He elevated them with the shuttle. He's going after the Spire here. Hydras are coming back to defend it. I think Eonzerg is going to defend. The Zealots are pretty strong here, but I think with the reinforcements, Eonzerg should be able to defend this. Meanwhile, there's the finishing Storm. Gets all four of those lurkers, Eonzerg was too busy with his attack in his main, and it looks like the attack is not yet over. Drawn's actually going to take a risk here and go for the lair. If he doesn't get it, all these attacks will have been wasted, and yeah, it looks like Drone's even coming off, making sure he's not able to get that, and I think Eonzerg, with the rest of these Hydras coming in, will be able to do it. it looks like Drawn's is going to go and get as many drone kills as he possibly can here. So, uh... Yeah, nice moves by, by Draw so far, and only three lurkers left to contain. Looks like Draw is going to take advantage of this to break out before Eon's work and reinforce this position, and he is going to be successful here. So Draw preventing the contain. Uh, however, however, remember that e that Eonzerg does have the fourth base up. He does have the extra mineral only mining that, and Draw doesn't have a third base yet. So even though Draw's done a good amount of damage, Eonzerg uh, once he's got that main repopulated, should still have e eco advantage. And look at the supplies. Draw at 112 against the 109 of Eonzerg. It basically even supply, which is generally good for the Zerg. A few Zerglings here not quite positioned correctly. Although I guess potentially they could move in here later to counterattack. Although it looks like Draw uh, has seen them, or maybe not. Uh, so, in the meanwhile, it looks like we've got nine gateways up in the base for draw. He is going to clean up these, uh, these couple of uh, Zerglings. And, uh, looks like Ian's are going to go up to Hive. He lost his Spire. Has he remade it anywhere? Uh, it doesn't look like he's remade his Spire. Um, but he is now going for a big attack with his army. A lot of Hydra Ling moving across the map. The Lurkers coming down the left side as well. Might get a bit of a surround on the Pearl's army here. The Lurkers in the back, the Hydra Ling in the front, but a huge storm again! Popping so many Lurkers for free here. Oh man, Eons are really needs to spread out the Lurkers a little bit better. However, the Lings are closing with the Dragoons with no Zelts at a buffer and not enough storms remaining on the High Templar. Draw is in huge trouble here. Eons are crushing through the Protoss army here. Draw has some reinforcements. He needs to bring the High Templar forward. He's got a max energy High Templar in the back that he seems to have forgotten about. And it looks like Eonzerg, though, will be pushed back by the reinforcements of Draw. Looks like he has now found that High Templar. He actually doesn't have a High Templar energy upgrade yet, so he only has two uh, Storms per, per Templar instead of the usual three. But he has got a third Nexus up. He is mining out the back uh, mineral patch here, so he is uh, regaining, uh, or rather evening out the economy. Meanwhile, though, Eonzerg is going up to Hive, getting a Sunken there because, of course, he knows Draw does love to do these drops. But then getting a Sunken or two in the main base is a very good investment. Well, I don't know what this random goon is doing over here. Uh, but we do have a uh, plus 2 upgrade as well, by the way, on the Protoss army, whereas it's still 1-0 for the Zerg. Even though the upgrades I thought were basically even uh, earlier on. Looks like uh, Draw's pulled ahead here. And uh, looks like uh, a bit of a small skirmish, but the Zerg is going to retreat. It's like Hive well on its way. The Zerg actually isn't upgrading anymore, which is uh, a little bit problematic, I think. I don't know if he's just forgotten or something, but he stopped at plus 1 completely. And draw is uh, 
Well, Drones actually stopped at plus two, so <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, here is the uh, elevator again going to the main base. Going to try that move again, but this time there is a Sun Colony already there. And the Eon Zerg, of course, does have the spotting shuttle as well. So going to pull a few units back. Looks like uh, just going to leave the Lurkers here to, to defend against the main army and move the mobile group components back to try and deal with these Zealots. It doesn't look like this drop will actually do too much here. Meanwhile, a probe sneaking down to the bottom right, maybe to try and take a hit the base or just to scout for one uh, that Yeltsuk might have taken, but uh, we're gonna get just gonna see an overlord there, not gonna be able to do anything. Meanwhile, Dragon is sending his army the other way now, head towards the 12 o'clock mineral only, which only has a single lurker there. It looks like Yeltsuk's army is completely out of position. He's got his lurkers defending the natural and the rest of his army in the main base. So this attack by Draw, he could just run in, snipe a couple of these hatcheries, and move out here. Although I think it was quite smart for Yeltsuk to build all these hatcheries here. So Draw can't just snipe one hatchery and leave. He would have to kill like all three of these hatcheries to completely shut down the base. Even if he kills these two, Eonzerg can still semi-distance mine to the third one and not be that inefficient. But it looks like Eonzerg, though, has sent his entire army around the south side because he didn't realize that the Pearl's army was up here. Is he just going to counterattack or is he going to save his base? It looks like Eonzerg is just going to counterattack here. We could see a base race situation. He sent a few links to deny this bottom right base, but the rest of his army is going towards the Pearl's natural. What is there? There's almost nothing here. There's no High Templar, no Reaver, no... Uh, no... Splash damage, but it looks like Eonzerk has instead decided to go for the third base of draw, which does have a high Templar with three storms on it. So that's going to be really hard for him to break here. If he just gone for the natural, it would have been much more effective. But with this high Templar, it's so much more difficult to break this location. And it looks like Eonzerk's attack is going to be stopped short here. And draw, having killed all of the hatcheries, is just going to retreat. He's even sent a couple of zealots to take down that uh, fourth base attempt at the top left base and now draw is in really nice position 162 supply against 118 it's bad it's three base against three base he's held onto this base easy peasy and eonzer who looked to be in a decent position is suddenly really struggling in this game just you know slightly unfortunate that his army was out of position but more importantly making a poor decision to attack the third instead of the natural bit of a missed storm there for draw but otherwise he's no king of the units more units coming in the rear for eonzer but you know i don't think it's really gonna do too much here Probably a better idea to just save these units. It looks like, uh... oh wow, crazy drop here. Two DTs, a High Templar, and a Zella moving out to continue the harassment against uh, Eonzer. Eonzer keeps having random groups of units here in the middle. I don't know if he has a rally point here or something, but uh, looks like he's going to try and retake this mineral only. Random DD going to, down to the bottom right, make sure nothing's over there. Two Zellas having done their job here at the top left. Uh, are just going to escape. It looks like the half three was cancelled. I don't see the dead half three little thing on the ground. In the meantime, a few lurkers gonna get picked off here. These hydras probably should not engage, should just go retreat. And uh oh. Okay. Oh god. Oh no! Nice storm there. I don't know why he didn't drop the DTs in the main to scare all the drones away first, but uh <laughs> Alright, this that doesn't do too much. Just drop them on the side, but there's a spore and a sunken here as well. So I don't really see that doing too much here. I don't know why he didn't drop the two DTs here to scare the drones and then like storm when they ran away. I guess he assumed that because there was a sunken in that and the Hydra and the Overlords there anyway, might not have really done that much. But yeah, he's moving his main army to the top left now while uh, getting ready to set up his own mineral only here. He's at 160 supply against 103 for Eonzerg. Eonzerg forced to cancel this mineral only as well. Looks like he's going to go and uh, deny this uh, expansion of draw at least, but his own expansion is denied as well. So it's again 3 base to 3 base, which is pretty rough for the Zerg player. And there is the denial. By the way, this High Templar is still alive, So and it's got another storm here, so I'm a little bit surprised that Eonzerg hasn't cleaned this up. There's like just so much stuff going on on the map that he just hasn't been able to pay attention, but this is actually quite problematic. It's like another free storm drop here for Draw, uh, although Draw doesn't seem to have noticed it either. Meanwhile though, Draw's actually mined out at his main and his natural, so Draw actually is back down to just a single base, while Eonzerg uh, actually still has a mining at, at all three of his bases, even though it's uh, getting a little bit thin. Um, just because he's you know, lost a bunch of drones here and there, uh, it's actually doing a good job. Meanwhile, it looks like some Hydra's trying to escape from a whole bunch of DTs here. And ah, uh, there's a second Storm here, getting five additional kills. So nine kills on this High Templar, really nice. And it looks like Yeldrick still hasn't noticed that this is here, by the way. So if that just recharges to another Storm, that'll be a little bit silly. 
But uh, yeah, looks like Drawn moving his main army down to the south here. I think he wants to make sure he can establish another base. Doesn't want to end up in a silly situation where, you know, he's got a big lead but suddenly mines out and Beyonzo just turtles up and somehow comes back here. Wants to make sure that, you know, he keeps up the income. Uh, doesn't lose in, in a silly fashion like that. And Eonzerg is getting his 12 o'clock, but again, it's not a huge deal even if Eonzerg gets that. They'll still be on even basis, so it's, so it's still okay for the Perdos. They're all getting a little bit supply blocked here, but otherwise, he's moving out with a big army. And it looks like the Lurkers are a little bit out of position here. I don't know where Eonzerg's forces are. Oh man, he's got a lot of units just uh, all over the place here, but Draw is moving in. He's going for the kill here. He's got a massive supply lead, and I don't see any way for Eonzerg to stop this army. This is a gigantic army. For draw here, Eonzerg would have to do a miracle defense to stop this. Look at how many Dragoons they are. I don't know what Eonzerg could do. Maybe just spam Zerglings or something now to, to stop this. Uh, I think all the storms have been used on this guy. Almost another storm. It looks like one more storm on this high Templar as well. But Eonzerg doesn't even have any Sunkins left to help defend this. So Eonzerg pulling some Lurka Ling in here. But uh, with that many Dragoons, I really don't see what he's supposed to do. He's down to half the supply of his opponents. Uh, and yeah, his army just gets completely obliterated there. Looks like the random TT that was over here does get killed. The random high tempo over here has been killed as well. But otherwise, uh, Eons are getting pretty demolished. Although it looks like Draw feels like having run out of storms and with only Dragoons remaining and no Zealous, he's actually going to pull back here and save the rest of his army. And this is actually a fairly conservative but not necessarily poor choice considering that without storms or Zealous, Pure Dragoon is actually fairly vulnerable to Mass Hydra Ling. So he wants to make sure he doesn't, you know, throw the units away inefficiently. And he knows that, you know, he's got this mineral only base mining as well. He's in pretty good shape. So, uh... So he's just gonna pull back. Notice he's building a lot of High Templars now, replenishing that, that High Templar count. Also gonna get some Archons here, since we are heading into the late game, or I guess we're already in the late game. Uh, PVZ here definitely, uh, wants those, uh, wants those Archons. Now, the Yonsberg, interestingly, didn't actually lose that many buildings here. A Hatchery, and I think the Hydra Den. Um, and obviously a bunch of units as well, but otherwise, uh... You know, I thought he was just going to die straight away to that attack, but, uh, but instead he's, uh, he's somehow still alive here. Meanwhile, though, Draw's going to get a base at the bottom right, and there's really nothing that Eonzer can do about that, unless he's researched Drop or something, which I don't think he has. He really just cannot move to attack that, because, of course, Draw's army's right here. And it looks like Draw's going to go for an attack while also Storm Dropping here. Maybe just use his army slightly to distract, poke a little bit, freak Eonzer out, and then go for a big Storm Drop. Not actually that many drones in the natural, but uh-oh. I think there's a lot of drone stacks here on the main. Oh, but, yeah, but Draw actually moves away because he doesn't see any minerals left there. Doesn't realize there's a huge stack right there. And looks like there's the storm on the natural. Gonna get another one off. Yep, very nicely done. But Eonzerg, right, though, going for a big attack on Draw's mineral only. And it looks like uh, there are a couple of high Templar, though. And oh, man, these storms could be absolutely brutal. Oh, God. That's not going well. A few lurkers that borrow are not even in good positions, and uh, Eonzer's army is going to get cleaned up here. It looks like a bit of a link counterattack is at least going to stop this base from going up for draw. Meanwhile, though, <laughs> Eonzer just running the drones away from it. Tempo, I don't think I have any energy anymore. Um, meanwhile, there's a lot of drones, I think, at this patch. It looks really dark. And yeah, it looks like he's going to transfer them over to the natural now, but the, the high temple are still there, though. Oh my god. Oh god, this could be bad. Oh no, he's going to the mineral only. Oh, thank goodness. If you, if you transfer those to the natural, they could be dead. Um, meanwhile, is actually getting the, the top left base, but he's at 66 supply against 165. So, yeah, 100 supply behind. I don't really see how he's going to hold this base. It's like, oh, is the Templar going to get out? The Templar gets out! Storm! Oh no! Oh god, they both got out. Oh, Yonzerg. Yonzerg is very sad about that, I'm sure. He's down to 45 supply against 171. It's now just up to draw when he wants to end the game. So, uh, he's going in here. Oh, gonna get some more drones, because why not? Yonzo down to 36 supply. He doesn't want to lose again. If he loses this game, he'll be 0-3 in the finals. Not exactly what, uh, what he wants to happen here, but unavoidable, I'm afraid. And GG from Eonzer draw! takes the first game and puts Sass in the lead. Whew. All right, all right. So let's go on to game number two.